Um, I love that plug too. It's terrifying. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, uh, th this is one that I wanted to read because this is one that I, I have read different versions of at Helicon West for years, uh, years, years, years. Like back when we used to meet at uh, Citrus and Sage, like I read a version of this, this uh, one time. And uh, it's changed quite a bit. It's, it used to not be about fishing at all. In fact, I started writing this essay before I fished. Uh, and then eventually it found its way into this book, which is weird. Um, and it's sort of about fishing now. Uh, it's mostly about where I grew up, though, uh, which is in, uh, central Utah. Uh, I grew up in um, Spring City, Utah, if anybody's heard of that. Uh, it's a really small, uh, pretty town, uh, just north of, uh, or just south of Mount Pleasant and north of Ephraim. It's just kind of in the middle there. And uh, it's a place I, I still really love, but uh, I don't go there very much. Uh, but it's, it's uh, yeah, and so it's interesting to me to, to come here and read this because this, yeah, literally started off as a sketch that I read once a long time ago and it slowly found its way into a book, which is kind of fun and cool. Um, so uh, this one is called um, A Good Place to Make Saints. Um, pardon? He always forgets me. I don't forget you. I was still, I was looking for the book. Tim, why don't you tell us what you're doing here? So. <laughs> oh, thanks, Russ. Um, this was another hard one. They, they told me yesterday, I think, that you're going to be reading this one. So I had to run home and get my autographed copy of the book and read the story. And uh, at one point, Russ mentions uh, lime green grasshoppers. So this is going to be a, kind of a an abstract grasshopper pattern that would probably work as an opera. That's the method to the madness. Okay, very good. And uh, I, just before I get going, I just want to thank Star and everybody for hosting us. Thank you so much. I, 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 we, we kind of allude to this in our, in our intro, like this book would not exist without Helicon West. Like it wouldn't have happened. Uh, because, well, we would have never met each other, we would have never heard each other's writing, that's the most self-serving of the, the reasons, but I, I, I'm so glad that this place, that we are f fostering writing, it's, I think it's really important and it's a good thing, and I'm so grateful that I had this supportive place to, to write and to, to listen and to, to get better, it's, it's really important. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming tonight, I appreciate all of you too. I'm glad to see students. I actually have a lot of students here, which is really hard for me to do sometimes. So. Did you like make them come for credit or something? No, I, 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 told, uh, I told Dez's class today uh, that I was reading, but Dez was the only one who knew what I was talking about because I was like, I have the longest day today and, and, uh, and I have a cold. And uh, I was just complaining, but she, yeah. <laughs> she's the, the only one who knew, actually. So uh, I wouldn't dare tell my classes because I feel dumb. So. Uh, I, uh, well, no, I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm mostly teaching, I'm only teaching composition this term, and most of them don't care, which is where they should be, that's fine, fine so, uh, but yeah, so that was a long answer to a very easy question, I should have just said no, so, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, very good, uh, so I'll, I'll read this, and uh, this one sort of resembles a grasshopper, which I would fish as a grasshopper. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, uh, it has an epigraph to begin with. Uh, the wilderness and the solitary places shall be glad for them, and the deserts shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Isaiah 35, 1. I imagine it started with a single shovel load. Simon T. Beck threw some rich brown mountain earth into Reeder Creek and watched it disappear. Uh, he threw in a few more loads, he moved some rocks, and diverted the stream a couple of feet. Then he got his son, my granddad, Osmer, to help him. Simon may have never moved the stream if it wasn't for Brigham Young. Uh, when he entered the Salt Lake Valley, he slammed his cane into the dry ground and declared, right here will stand the temple of our God. That same week, Young's, Young's followers started to survey and build up a city from the desert floor. At what would be the city center, they laid the foundation for a temple. 
When pressured by others to push ahead to California where the ground was wet and the soil fertile, Young replied, this is a good place to make saints. Young would die 40 years later, but in that time he would organize and establish 350 colonies, mostly in Utah and southern Idaho, but some as far away as Mexico and Canada. His goal was a God-centered, self-sustaining, utopian society. One of Young's uh, settlements in central Utah, Little Denmark, now Spring City, stumbles at the base of two mountains. The pioneers called the larger one God's armchair and the slightly smaller one Bishop's armchair. <laughs> Apart from a few veins of rich earth that a creek dragged down from the mountains, Spring City's soil was acrid and white with oolitic sediment. Half a dozen natural springs dotted the valley, but they were hotly contended, for, contended by the local Blackhawks who regularly raided the Mormon settlers. One homesteader said of the valley, not even a jackrabbit could exist. The only thing that seemed to thrive were sagebrush and rattlesnakes. Spring City finally turned a corner around 1900. In February of 1913, 20,000 jackrabbits, the same uh, rabbits that people thought couldn't survive, were captured in and around the town. Everybody and everything except the Blackhawks and the Jackrabbits seemed to enjoy some ease. But Spring City reached its capacity. There wasn't enough arable soil to sustain a larger population, and only so many people could work at the local cafe, general store, creamery, saloon, and milling company. They believed they were commanded by prophets and God to make the land yield support for their growing population. And when, God, when the most God could offer was a rainstorm here and a mild winter there, the settlers endeavored to change the one thing that would actually sustain them, the land itself down to the character of the soil. The mountain I, gr the mountain I grew up, uh, sorry, I knew growing up is different from the one my great-grandfather Simon T. Beck knew, and partially because of him. Streams now connect a collection of dammed reservoirs and the land drips with cow cabbage and cheat grass. The mountain covered in thick pines, now tender because of beetles, and aspens had elk and deer sleeping in the shade. I learned to fish there, really fish up on the, an outlet to Gooseberry Reservoir. The stream, almost all undercut banks, has some sections nearly going underground. Kirk Benj, a kid eager to piss off something in nature, who would grow up to be a man with a pet monkey named Gonorrhea, which is true, <laughs> and, and a job uh, with the Utah State Health Lab, where he gets heads of dogs, cougars, cats, squirrels, and raccoons regularly mailed to him, taught me to fish there when we were in high school. I started on the lakes and reservoirs with my dad and the Boy Scouts, but the fishing always felt predicated on something other than skill or work. Instead, it was an equation almost completely dependent on time spent at the lip of a lake. Kirk taught me to comb over the cheat grass and find a neon green grasshopper. We. Uh, pierce their bodies with our small golden claw hooks. Uh, something resembling runny peanut butter would ooze out and stick to our fingers. We'd look in the shadows of the undercut banks for the errant rainbow trout, rebel fish that had snuck past the cement outlet, threaded the gate, and found a wild home away from the controlled reservoir. They were stupid for our hoppers. We'd toss out the mess of guts and limbs and they'd hit hard. That small outlet is the first place I ever had a double-digit day. That was the first time I ever had felt euphoric about fishing. Maybe the first time I felt euphoric about anything. About 15 miles south of where Gooseberry is now, Simon T. Beck ran sheep in the shadow of God's armchair. When he tired of eating beef and mutton, he fished for cutthroats in the small streams that wound on top of the flat mountain. He didn't need rods, lures, flies, or bait. He'd lean over a fallen log crossing the stream and drop a naked hook in the water, and the fish would strike. He noticed most of the water eventually sloped off the east side of the mountain, away from Spring City. That's when he got the idea to move the water. After Simon and Osmer bent Reader Crick for a, well, that's my Sam Peter coming through, Crick there. Uh, for a, a few summers, they talked to others and got help. The stream that once left the mountain to the east now flows west. It's the same waterway that threads my family's land to include my childhood home's backyard. My mom told me not to, but I would spend hours balancing on rocks trying not to get my sneakers wet. Cockleburrs would cover me and whichever dog I had with me, and my shoes had enough soil cake to them to start a medium-sized herb garden. Nearly a decade after Simon died, the town received New Deal money, and uh, the Civilian Conservation Corps 
work, uh, workers burrowed through the mountain twice to bring more water and soil down to the valley. They built dams and they made valleys into lakes. In the 60s, they chopped terraces into the mountain to sponge up even more water. I never met my granddad or great-granddad. They both passed before I was born. But as much as nearly anybody, they're responsible for showing me the water and the trout on top of that mountain and that changed me into an angler. I've taken an ATV down a trail where Reeder Creek once ran, but only once. It's now a maze of pine stands and deadfall. It's puckered, wiltered, wil wilted, and brittle. So, thank you. This, this may be, this, you, you, you guys may be witness to the last. Uh, We're doing it one more time. Hooks and books in Logan. That's true, yeah. We've done it here. We should have done it So if you here, haven't so. seen it yet, you're just lazy. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so yeah. people have seen it before, they're here tonight. Yeah. I've seen it a couple of times. Yes. <laughs> All good. the students you make come. Yeah. <laughs> But no, thank you guys for coming out. We really appreciate it. And uh, an yeah. open mic. And open mic is open. Should I? Do you want me right to introduce now. it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, where's the machine? Oh, right I'll go grab it. Yeah.